Hi folks, welcome once again to a Gaz Labs little video and what I've done to today is I've, I've been working quite hard on this uh, little VFO um, controller or uh, VFO um, TXCO um, and I've managed to get it to function this far but unfortunately it does have a few issues and you can see there that the step is actually changing all by itself and that shouldn't happen. It should just happen when you press this, which it does, um, and it's causing all sorts of problems. Um, the other thing is, um, as well, is that the, the calibration function doesn't seem to work properly, um, or as it should. Um, and, you know, that's a bit of an issue, because I can't calibrate it. Um, this part actually works. The um, I can put it into the different modes. So in TX at the moment, it's gone, um, you, know, you can see there it's gone into TX um, and that's absolutely fine. It wants to stay there. The minute that I put it into receive or the receiver mode, if you, it's doing something really crackers and then suddenly pops back into TRX mode. Um, I don't know what that is all about. Um, I haven't, I really just can't work it out at the moment. Um, I've had all sorts of issues with this um, and I think probably the first thing to point out is that um, when you're shopping on Amazon, um, not all screens are actually sold equal. Um, this one is an SH1106 um, and I can't remember the company that uh, that produced it, but it's not a brilliant screen to be fair. Um, it uh, um, did have a few problems and I struggled beyond belief to actually get um, a, the appropriate uh, driver for it or library file or at least one that actually functions as it should and I've managed to you know I've managed to find one I think um, just by basically digging around the internet for about three or four hours um, just trying to find one that would actually work for it and um, the symptoms were that a pretty much 75% of the screen were complete white snow and uh, it was causing all sorts of hassles. Um, I've now managed to get over that. Now what I would also say is that for you guys that are maybe doing following along or maybe you know you're doing similar projects or projects of, of, you know, of your own is and you've got these problems before you throw it out the window just try and break things down a little bit now i've broken this down into you know little sections i've managed to get the you know i've worked on the screen and then once i've got the screen functioning as i should i've then reconnected maybe the si5351 and the rotary encoder um, and then um, I've then gone to the next issue, which in my case is this rotary encoder. This has caused me again a few headaches because the encoder that I've actually got is slightly different than the one that is used in this, um, or at least laid out in this uh, schematic from um, the uh, PA uh, station. Um, he, uh, I think it's a it's a Dutch station. He's he's basically done this, and I've been basically following along his pretty much his tutorial. However, I've I've run into all sorts of problems, as I say, with just different parts. Now, he's been using the SSD 1306 from Adafruit, I believe, and he's probably been using an Adafruit encoder, which I think is probably going to be a little bit better, um, a, a better encoder or without for sure, I would say. Um, again, um, you know, I've not done that. I've just got cheap Amazon parts. They were basically coming in a bag like this. Um, and there was about six of them in it and there were about five are. so I've tried to do this on the cheap and I wonder if that was probably the wisest thing to do but hey ho you know I've made my bed and all that sort of stuff so we'll see what uh, what happens um, now and um, funny enough it is actually generating um, some signal it's a bit sawtooth like but um, you know I think I can work on that like I said before I'll, I'll build it up i'll start doing bit by bit and then getting each of the functions to work so at the moment i'm working on the encoder i've had the screen sort of not working and working and uh, it uh, it does actually so far function um programming it was uh, fairly straightforward um i would recommend not installing the windows app all right i found that to be absolutely horrendous um, in when you're trying to install libraries it drove me insane so I very quickly went to the straightforward standalone installer which is slightly hidden away on the Arduino um, website 
you've actually they you know it's it's very obvious where the app is but it's not so obvious where the standalone in, installer is so try and find that if you can um installing the libraries was fairly straightforward although the a lot of the tutorials suggest that you should um put the um use the the library manager to to install them it didn't work for me um i found it better just to find the install folder and then just put the libraries directly in there um and then trying to get everything to reference one another is also um, very interesting fun and game so good luck with that and as i say if any of you guys out there are really really good at coding please leave some comments down below um because i'd love to talk to someone that is a good coder um and can ha actually help me rectify some of the issues that i've actually got um that would be really really good um because um i'm really struggling and i, I don't actually I, I've, I've never coded anything in my life um closest i think i've ever got is probably html right okay so that being said um it's now getting on for uh i think uh, one o'clock in the morning i'm not sure but i'm gonna stick a fork in it and say it's done for now um and come back to it another time um yeah so uh, again thanks for watching and uh yeah, see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.